as soon as possible. So the epistle for the peace of Corpus Christi is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Brethren, I myself have received from the Lord what I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and giving thanks, broke, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which shall be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner also the cup, after he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you shall eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. For let a man prove himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthily without distinguishing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment to himself. Please say the Holy Gospel. The Gospel is taken from John chapter 6. At that time Jesus said to the crowds of the Jews, My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and as I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. This is the bread that has come down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the man and died, he who eats this bread shall live forever. Please be seated. The sacred banquet wherein Christ is received. In the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, amen. For with this feast that we celebrate the external solemnity, and you will see that the church tries to help us to, to properly celebrate the feast, but they will even permit when you have the external solemnity on Sunday, because during the week sometimes you don't have the opportunities to do, um, like the procession of the Blessed Sacrament, different things, allowing the faithful to be able to participate. So you have these external solemnities. Now this is the feast of the body of Christ. In French they refer to this as the feast of God. And I think in some ways that, that title can help us to understand that this is the feast of Almighty God in terms of the body, blood, soul, divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is what we celebrate. To celebrate the feast of the Blessed Sacrament. And so I think that's something for us to reflect upon. You know, how this sums up, I think, what this feast day means for us. In terms of our devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, the necessity of preparing ourselves well to receive our Lord. Because again, when we think about it, when we look at it in terms of receiving the Blessed Sacrament, receiving Holy Communion, it is where we are receiving Almighty God into our soul. And having that life of God within us, we mentioned that a while ago about sanctifying grace, life of God within us. And so this is one of the important means for us to gain that life of God by receiving our Lord worthily. I mean, just as you see that our Lord mentions about those that receive unworthily, well, they receive judgment to themselves. They cast the judgment upon themselves because, yes, they're receiving our Lord unworthily. The Magnificat Antiphonic Vespers that we pray reminds us of receiving God is a pledge of Future glory in the Sacrum Convivium, the famous hymn that we have, the beautiful hymn. It talks about the memory of his passion is renewed, the mind is filled with grace, and a pledge of future glory is given us all. And I think that's something that also for us to reflect upon. That as we receive Holy Communion, as we try to have that life of God within us, that this is a pledge for our future glory. And that's exactly what our Lord is saying, that you will live forever. And he's obviously referring to the fact of you know, our life in heaven, God willing, where other people, he mentions about you know, the fathers, the old fathers of, you know, when they received the manna coming down, that was to, to feed them in the desert. It was symbolic of Holy Communion, but that was to feed them in the desert as he mentions, they still died, you know, obviously from that. Because it wasn't, it wasn't truly the body of our Lord. 
It was symbolic of it, yes. But it wasn't truly the body of our Lord to where then, God willing, that we will live forever. Live forever in heaven. And that's once this hymn, the Supper Convivium, this Antiphon. Of how it reminds us of that pledge that God is offering to us. By receiving him, by being united with him, but abode with him, that you will have this pledge of future glory. And I think that's where we have to reflect upon so much is contained in the Blessed Sacrament. So much is contained for us, the devotion that we should have. We can say certainly that was something that was attacked for the changes at the Second Vatican Council. Lack of devotion, lack of respect for the Blessed Sacrament, receiving the hand. All of these different things that would lessen our true devotion that we should have to the Blessed Sacrament. And I think that's rare then for us to reflect because we have obviously um, the proper respect that is given to the Blessed Sacrament. And that should then therefore foster in you a greater devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. Of making the visits, you know, coming for adoration, coming for benediction, that should help and instill in us a greater devotion, a greater respect for receiving our Lord, and then certainly making sure that we're always in the state of grace before we receive Holy Communion. But again, our Lord wants for us to receive Him. And again, you see how the church, and I would say Pius X, lowering the age for children to receive at a younger age because he wanted to protect the children, to help to sanctify them, because he felt they needed it. They needed this even at such a young age because of the world around us. And again, we think back to the Middle Ages, the, how infrequently even the saints were able receive Holy Communities was just not the practice. And so we have the opportunity where we could receive every day. You know, we come to Mass, obviously, depending on your schedules. You have that chance to receive the Blessed Sacrament every day. And again, when we think about receiving the Blessed Sacrament, when we receive, think about what it contains, it contains Almighty God. And so therefore, the more that we receive, the more that we have that life of God within us. As so I would say, the preparation for our soul to receive worthily, first and foremost, a good confession. You know, to prepare the soul well, to ensure that we're in the state of grace. You know, then obviously coming to Mass early to prepare yourself, to prepare yourself before receiving Holy Communion. Coming in late, when we come in the last minute. And then also Thanksgiving after Mass, too. To thank God for coming into your soul. You know, this preparation beforehand, this Thanksgiving after, we owe that to Almighty God because He has entered into our soul. And so we owe that to give back to God. That our soul is as prepared as it can be. And also then to thank Almighty God that He has come to us. And that's what we refer to the Blessed Sacrament as the Sacrament of Love. It is also, we would say, it's, it's the way that God proves his, his love to us by giving us that chance, by having that opportunity to receive Him. And I think if we reflect upon these things, we reflect upon truly what the Blessed Sacrament is, what it means for our soul. I think that can help us then to, to prepare ourselves better. Or to think about and say, okay, well, I'm passing the church, or I'm going to come in for a visit. Or, you know, we have those, those chances, those opportunities to come to a benediction. Or when we have the all-day adorations, to make that time, you know, to try to come down at least for some time to spend with our Lord. Because our Lord is here, and He loves us, and He wants to abide within us. And so I think that's where we need to have this greater appreciation and greater love for the Blessed Sacrament. 
and certainly it can be something that we become not nonchalant about it but i mean it becomes now that we have the same understand the same preparation each time they're almost complacent in receiving our lord and i think with these feasts the different things that can help us then to try to to understand greater don garage in the liturgical year his beautiful session on corpus christi and it's worthwhile for us to to read these things to 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 look and to see you know if there's different spiritual books on the blessed sacrament the holy eucharist what it means for our soul if we have a greater understanding a greater appreciation of that the more graces will come to our soul the more prepared we will be the more prepared we are the more we will receive out of it but again like i say if we just kind of come not much preparation and receive holy communion not much of a thanksgiving afterward we're not receiving the same amount of graces that we should and so that is why when the church institutes a feast like this to help us to have a greater appreciation, a greater understanding, and what we have then, you know, the procession of the Blessed Sacrament. Professing our faith in the belief that this is truly our Lord. We believe that, yes, but that there's also ways that we need to show that. As I say, coming to make visits, to turn to our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, the benedictions, the adorations, the processions, all of these are different means for us to increase our devotion and our respect for the Blessed Sacrament. And so I think for us, if we only knew the gift of God, as what our Lord told uh, the Samaritan woman at the well, when he was offering her drink, he was referring to sanctifying grace for her soul. He mentioned to her, he only knew the gift of God. And I think those words, and they should strike us in terms of what our Lord is trying to explain. If you only knew what God offers to our souls, I think all of us would make a greater effort to receive those graces. If we only knew and appreciated truly what God gives to us. And so that is why on this great feast of Corpus Christi, but we're celebrating the external, the external solemnity of it, that we do, it sums up by saying it is the feast of God. Because it contains his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And that is what we receive when we receive Holy Communion. And so God willing, we will take more of a preparation and more of a thanksgiving to truly appreciate what God has given to us, this gift of God. So therefore, that will be the pledge of our future glory. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.